Howdy and hello, I'm Doe. Hope you're doing good. We have more weak spot testing on the factory strider. Some things I wasn't aware of. One of which, they made the face take more damage. The eye at least. Before, it was not this weak. It took a full laser beam. Now it takes a quarter of a laser beam. Cankles, elbow joint, the face, and this shape. The pictures later, those were weak spots. But not all weak spots are treated the same. Underbelly may change. Two anti-tanks blow out the side and the top vents, making them weak as well. And sometimes they're weak enough to be penetrated by medium armor pin, such as all the center mass spots are when exposed. And there is also a neck weak spot. This is not weak to medium armor pin in my experience. Neither is the face. Examples of armor stripping. Family friendly, of course. Two side shots from the panel, and once it's gone, it can be shot by medium armor penetration, which is pretty good. Back shots. Aim above the opening vent on the behind. And two shots removes the vent and exposes the upper portion as well. Face shots. Hit the red square. But understand, you can't hit the brain with medium armor pin. You need heavy. And that works with the HMG emplacement or heavy machine gun. And all things above that as well. Most support weapons will have higher than that. Except for stalwart and machine gun and whatnot. The vents on the back. I don't know if they're heat sinks because the Scorcher can't damage them. And if a Scorcher can't damage it, I wouldn't call it a heat sink. This takes more damage from sun guns than others. And I don't feel like putting a timer on the screen for laser cannon. So instead, I'm using a language all folks can understand. Auto cannon. Here, we have the underbelly. Takes six shots. Pretty simple. That'll probably get removed, though. When it spawns in the Devastators, it opens up the vent in the back. Five shots. I think. I may have miscounted that. Eye shot. Eye of all, whatever it is. I'm being very careful to make sure I lend the shot so I don't get miscalculations. Six. For the side panel, it's four. Brain. Six. Then the back upper panel, if removed, would be five. Pretty freaking good so far. And the cankles. This is where it takes a turn for the worst. You really shouldn't be shooting for it. Just because you can hit it and there's no armor on it doesn't mean it's going to be the best thing ever. Thirteen shots. And the back panel, if removed. The back... The upper panel, I guess. The the vents. What are those called, dude? They're not heat sinks. They can't be. The time to kill for most weapons is not going to be that different across these weak spots. Except for on the cankles and the upper vents right here. The pistons. And also, I believe, the elbow crease joint. Now we have some quasar testing. You can two-shot the face if you land on the weak spot. And if you clear all the ads around this dude, he's pretty useless. Once you break the miniguns and you're close enough, the top turret can't hurt you. Elbow shots. At first, people made out to seem that this would be super sick. It takes four anti-tanks. Belly shot combination here. One quasar into two impact nades. Followed by three dominator shots. The face only takes a quasar and two impacts. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Then we have Quasar, grenade pistol, nade, into three dominator shots. Does one impact grenade equal three dominator shots here? That's what the math seems like. Then we have Quasar, double impact, grenade pistol, lock it in, brother. You're supposed to be prepared. Boy Scout motto or something like that. Slogan. One of the, one of the two. I always forget. It would take you two anti tanks to an exposed side, by the by. Riot shield can be useful. Miniguns won't shoot you if the shield's out facing directly at them. Turn too far to the side or put it away. They spool up and begin firing. But don't worry. Whip it back out and they stop. You can use a grenade pistol. It takes three grenades to break a single minigun. Or you can instead shoot seven to nine at the underbelly and kill it that way. You can also throw grenades from the safety of your shield to speed up the process. And they're pretty good at taking out the devastators if you have defender as well. Once we get a medium pin single handed weapon, things will be a bit better for the riot shield. HMG emplacement can't take damage from the front, but turning a little to the side, it blows you up instantaneously. In my experience, though, I sat there for minutes at a time and didn't take any damage. The miniguns are broken in a few shots from the HMG, and you can then shoot the underbelly if you're close enough, which would be ideal if you can't get the angle. In this case, I can't see. Go for the eyeball. When you see blue, no good. Orange, you're going through and penetrating and doing damage. Lane way I have orbital laser. I've had pretty massive inconsistencies with this orbital. It can kill it, 
albeit not that fast. Given the cooldown too, I don't, I don't think it's really worth. But it tries to beam the back vents, and if it hit him well, it'll kill it. But here's an example where it didn't hit him well. I sped it up to make it faster and everything, and it just tanked the whole laser. It wasn't hitting correctly, that's the issue. It was hitting the side. You wanted to hit those vents instead. And here is the most consistent orbital, I would say. Eagle Strike against these guys. Apparently one can kill them. I haven't had that happen yet, so I can't confirm. But I do know that two has been a 100% kill rate for me. And I've done it a few times. That's consistent. We like that. A lot. Orbital 380 is the best barrage in my experience to kill this guy. But it's also going to be 50-50. And you'll probably end up dying. <laughs> more often than you like. <laughs> but don't worry. Sometimes you die, it dies. Everyone's happy. Other times it's just you dying. And then you're not so happy. So it's a mixed bag of marbles with that one. And the blast radius is massive. Spears damage is better than you and I thought. The lock-on is worse than we could possibly imagine together. But from the correct distance and angle, you hit behind the face slash head area. Which is good. That's the weak spot. What does that mean exactly? You can two-shot it. It's huge. When too far away, you will always target the cannon turret up top. You may like that, you may not, but that's what's going to happen. Once broken, though, you then target the undercarriage. But you can't really hit it. So based on your perspective of the strider that's where the rockets will hit and previously it was two shots towards the face but they didn't actually hit the face in this case they are it's still alive i'm not sure if it's broken right now it could be but regardless once this locks in green light go three shots better than five now for the side angle it'd be cool if one rocket broke the panels which they don't but that'd be really sick it'd make the spear just a little bit better nothing crazy just a little bit better because it'd be two shots I believe. This panel's broken now. And that one shot got it. If you get manual aim and can just shoot, the spear can one shot it. That'd be huge. A thermite. A single thermite can break the cannon turret. That's big stuff. Because I've thrown six frags at it and nothing happened. Uh, just be careful though. Sometimes these wall rock walls are not solid. Them turrets are cheating. Check them computer. And he has frag grenades on the eyeball. Impact grenades, rather. These can pierce. They have enough penetration. I think it's around six or seven. Whereas the grenade pistol and also grenade launcher can't. That's important. Crossbow does do damage to a broken side panel. It's just not very good damage. I sat here for a while shooting. Nothing crazy happened. And then grenade pistol takes, in this case, I believe it was seven rounds grenades whatever the case so it's, it's not nothing by any means crossbow can break these mini guns it is not worth it the damage is a lie the damage on the crossbow is just a scam truth be told and what's weird is it does damage to these mini guns but the whatchamacallit plasma punisher which is also explosive doesn't do damage at least not damage that makes any sense because you would think right here I'd be getting the deflected symbol. I don't get that for the crossbow, but I get that for Scorcher. I get that for the Plaza Punisher. It's strange. There's a little bit more to armor penetration than I'm aware of. I know there's levels, or I've heard of them. But it's weird how they're not listed in that manner for the weapons. There's more hierarchy even than, than what the weapons show. Here's a random clip of the crossbow. It's kind of nice. Primary weapons can break the front minigun turrets, but you want one that has medium armor pin and explosive damage. Those are two things you want to have. And right now, I believe the only one that has that would be the Dominator. Takes six shots-ish, maybe seven. But a full magazine can kill both turrets. The Eruptor can one-shot miniguns. Sometimes. Other times it can't. It's weird. There's some strange hitbox stuff going on with miniguns. If you break one and shoot the other one on the other side... It won't let you sometimes. There's a hitbox issue. I said I'm looking directly at it. But before, I've one-shot them. So I know it's possible to one-shot. Right now, it's just being difficult. I just skipped it. And this is why I made this video. Before, it took 
probably a magazine and a half for laser cannon to kill this guy to the face, but it changed. They changed the damage it requires since releasing it, which is a good thing. It means you're rewarded for hitting that weak spot in the face. And laser cannon, unlike the auto cannon, does the same damage it feels to that weak spot right there. And here's the neck joint shown. It's that whole space around it, but just a very small place to hit it. And it's just showing you laser cannon to give you more perspective on how the damage thresholds change. Compare this time to kill versus the back right there. Undercarriage and all that. And just recognize that there's different time to kill for different areas. And it applies to all weapons mostly the same. So the previous video was still helpful. It's just a little bit more context I didn't quite understand. And that's the video. Factory Striders are awesome. Can't wait for the bug version of this. Even though I think that Factory Striders and Battle Titans are kind of the same thing. Folks are saying that tanks and factory striders are the same thing. They're equal. I disagree, but it's not, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Peace. These are my drawings. I'll, I'll put text on what the colors mean. You know what? I should probably explain the colors. My bad. Orange means that you can't penetrate with medium armor, but it is always exposed. The yellow means once you blow it up using two anti-tanks, it still can't be hit with medium armor pin. Blue, it means that medium, medium armor pin and up can damage it. Zin, green. When you blow it up with two anti-tanks, because it all requires two antis, recoilless, eat it, quasar cannon, then you can shoot it with medium armor pin and it does big damage, and anything above that as well.